Welcome to Own Your Zone Podcast, where we feature venture capitalists, innovators, angels, and other investors who create positive impact globally. Now, let's get started with the show. Hi, I'm Janan Glasgow George. I'm a patent attorney and founder of Neo IP, a law firm helping clients maximize their return on investment for patent assets. And host of this show, Own Your Zone, where we feature venture capital investors, private equity funds, angels, and innovators. This episode is brought to you by Neo IP, where we help companies increase valuation, protect their business through strategic planning and IP protection. We help companies develop strategic portfolios with patent data and help innovators impact society for good by transforming ideas into assets and connecting them to resources they need. I'm so excited today to have with me Silvina Moschini, who is a unicorn in her own right. In fact, the first Latina unicorn. And she also is the founder of Unicorn Hunters, the show, the fund, and Unicorn. Welcome, Silvina. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here with you again. Thank you. We enjoyed having you at our Eclipse 2022 IP Futures Conference. You're inspiring and delightful. Thanks so much. You have such an amazing story, um, obviously, as an entrepreneur and now investor. Talk a little bit about your start and how you got to where you are today. I was born in Argentina in a small town and ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to build things and that's why I became an entrepreneur and and I always liked things that were disrupting models and doing things uh, differently. So when I became an entrepreneur and I uh, developed first a company to help women work remotely. I realized of how much transformation power uh, there is in technology and how all these uh, challenging times that we have been living from the pandemic to the crisis and the ups and downs of, of economy can help us to, to build opportunities that can become gigantic companies, but also change the life of of many. So from there, I build different companies. One, it's a show called Unicorn Hunters, in which we facilitate fundraising at a global scale for companies that have the potential to become billion dollar businesses. And the other one is a tokenized security called Unicoin, in which we make it easy for people to invest through a vehicle in a crypto, a different kind of crypto uh, regulated crypto public reporting company that facilitate investment through this vehicle in different assets. So doing things differently, like bending the rules, I say skirting the rules as we do many yes. times <laughs> as women to drive change and drive change, especially with, with impact. So with a lot of passion and thinking a little bit on uh, the creative side. <laughs> And so you are impacting companies globally now, right? The Unicorn Hunters show, you are really looking at global entrepreneurs. You're not limited to just one region or country, right? Yes, we believe that talent is universal. There are a amazing entrepreneurs, both men and women all over the world. And we work with partners to identify them. So we have in the show, uh, entrepreneurs from Israel, from Denmark, from Mexico, from Chile, from the US, from Canada. And our goal is to have more and more uh, entrepreneurs also in the MENA region in Middle East and, and Africa. I just recently was part of the um, judges for the final of the World Entrepreneurship Cup in Riyadh. And I was amazed by the quality and the number of women entrepreneurs in Saudi Arabia. So I'm fascinated by the things that are being done all over the world. And we want to make sure that our show reflects the talent that exists everywhere, not just the obvious, the talent that sometimes gets undiscovered because it's not highly visible for the naked eye. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we partner with the right people so we can have visibility and bring visibility to potential investors. Amazing. I, I was just in Dubai and in Riyadh um, recently and was 
astonished at the growth and how international the region is. It's amazing. amazing. Saudi Arabia is the fastest growing economy in the world last year. It's amazing. And I saw more change in Saudi Arabia in in terms of innovation, inclusion of women, that in the last five years, and I had seen in the rest of the world in the last hundred years, it's a... Women are 57% of the university's degrees represent 57%. 43% of the uh, entrepreneurs presented in this massive innovation show were women. And, you know, Alula, I don't know if you have a chance to be there. It's a touristic uh, region in the desert. Mm -hmm. I was, wow, like hotels and hospitality industry like I've seen in no other place and they are building also a city of the future in Neom. Yes. And uh, well, Dubai, what can I say? I recently became the uh, Emirate ho- a golden visa holder. Yes. Uh, they are supporting a lot of entrepreneurs there because they want to have innovation there as well in as in the region. It, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing what is going on outside uh, our areas of like, you know, common proximity in the world. It's, yeah. So much innovation. And a lot projected for Africa as well. You mentioned Middle East, North Africa, but Africa overall, we're seeing policies change, entrepreneurial activity over the last decade plus really increase, a lot of outside investment. Are there any particular countries in Africa that you're connected with or focused on? We are working very closely with Ghana and with Kenya. We're actually in prime time in Ghanaian television. We uh, work also with Egypt and some other countries that are close to both regions that are like the bridge. But yes, for us, it's super important because we want to uh, discover that entrepreneurs that can have like the massive multiplier opportunity. And I think that these untapped regions are so fertile for, for innovation because Eric Smith one time said that like, scarcity breeds clarity. And I can confidently talk about the scarcity because I was born in Argentina and in Latin America, we tend to be creative because of all the crises that we go through, political, economical, and things like that. And the same multiplies in, in regions like Africa. Mm-hmm. So that's the talent and the creativity. So I love that. I'm going to go to Australia for the Global Entrepreneurship summit again and and a lot of the innovation that I will see there is related to climate change to how to make the desert um, a productive by you know hacking through innovation uh, the their ability to produce and changing the industry as you saw in in Saudi Arabia like past was oil present and future with Saudi Vision 2030 is tourism, media, health tech, biotech, things that are yes. so transformational that it's, oh my God, it's just a fascinating lightning speed, how it's changing. Yeah, we see that so much because we work with intellectual property. Inventions are solutions to problems. So where there are problems, you will find creative solutions. That's where you find intellectual property. How important do you think is the idea of property rights and intellectual property in a lot of the companies and maybe countries that you're investing in? Well, I think it's essential. You are enabling the innovation by protecting the the ideas and and the knowledge. That's uh, something that it's it's critical to uh, keep the the keep it protected because. You know that there are, we would like to see that there are like extraordinary people around the world, that there are people that sometimes like they take advantage of entrepreneurs mm. and they they can literally like make billions with something that do not belong to them. They are not properly, properly advised and, and protected. So I think that it should be in the book 1.0 yeah. of entrepreneurship the importance of understanding that ideas and formulas um, until they are patented and registered are highly vulnerable. Yeah. Entrepreneurs are extremely vulnerable to 
to being uh, taken advantage of if they are not protected. So, and yet we see that often um, IP assets can motivate an acquisition, an exit for the entrepreneur. Okay. So it's okay. a helpful multiplier okay. in business. It, it should be an asset class. <laughs> yes, I think we're seeing trends also with data. And I'm sure that all of these areas that you mentioned, the climate, health tech, biotech, data plays such an important role. And yet a lot of times we don't see data as an asset class showing up on balance sheets. Are you seeing any trends there? Do you have some thoughts on that data as an asset yeah, class? Absolutely. And, and you see it more and more with the um, now super, super popular concept of artificial intelligence. It has been around for many, many, many years, but now it, it just, just GPT became mainstream. So artificial intelligence is possible through data. So if we have data, we have the ability together with the artificial intelligence to predict future outcomes, to maximize, to do better targeting on the, on the client. So it's, uh, at the end of the day, at the core of every business, if done properly, if done properly structured, if, uh, it's a massive, a massive asset. And, and I believe that many companies that die uh, today because of the lack of funding and all the crisis that was uh, going on in the, mm -hmm. in the market, it, it is because they probably didn't understand that they have an intrinsic value if they were able to properly structure and collect their, their data, that it was probably more valuable than the business that they have itself. Yes. So many companies are just, at the end of the day, like, you know, it's a data game. Like for us, even when we are building a massive network of investors uh, through the shows, because the show enable us to get in front of 400 million people through the partnership that we have for distribution of unicorn hunters, these people that come to the show and are enjoying the pitches of the entrepreneurs are people that can become investors from many other companies. So we can take this data beyond the show and facilitate investment opportunities because on the other hand, we have the data of the entrepreneurs that are interested in pitching the idea. So the show becomes a connector between the deal flow and the investors. Yes. But what it's really, really valuable at the end of the day is the data. Yeah. So connecting the dots. I think that's true. For sure. And so what, are, what trends are you seeing across the companies then also? I am sure you are monitoring. What's the data behind unicorns? What do you see there? Well, I see a, a huge opportunity just by the way. I'm bringing one of the top experts in the world in artificial intelligence, um, very senior executive from Google uh, to our board of directors precisely because of this very, very timely and precise comment that you, that you, um, that you made uh, to better use the power of uh, data to, to build better journeys, to understand exactly what triggers decision, what is important for people, what people want to see, what people want to want to buy how i mean this has been done for years like companies like amazon uh it's just like now suddenly it, it's like with remote work like oh pandemic and people were like yes i can work remotely <laughs> and now it's people like, oh, yes i can use data so for us in unicorn hunters it can help us to do better prediction models to understand through data what are the companies that are likely to become billion dollar businesses uh, based on data on past performance of companies that became billion dollar businesses. What are the key drivers for, for success? What is what companies that become or entrepreneurs that become successful are a measure by? What are the key KPIs? But also to understanding how you connect the dots because for us it's what happened in the world of investment is exactly what happened in the world of data. Like, you know, you have single guys here Single women here, they all want to meet, but the dots are not connected. So you have data understanding what she wants and data understanding what he wants. You will be able to put together the mechanisms so they can actually match and, and match based on their, their interests. And the same thing is 
what we are doing with Unicorn Hunters, understanding our audiences to be able to provide them the perfect match with the financial vehicles, like in the case of Unicoin, it's a totally different type of crypto. We did options. We, we are doing options. We are doing swap with real estate. Now it's such a huge yeah. opportunity where people have assets and they have assets that they are not uh, using or perhaps like they acquire and they don't know what to do with them. So they can trade them for this other asset class and have liquidity sooner and in better terms or creating high yield notes, like doing what bankers have done since the Medici, but doing it with blockchain technology. Yes. So this is something that the data allow us to do, to understand the audience better and use technology to do it at a scale, do it yes. more efficiently. Scale, that's the key to unicorns, right? Being able to scale in the right market, and timing obviously has a role as well. I love what you're doing with that. It also gives access to most people around the world who aren't traditionally considered in funds or as investors, right? You're giving them a, a way to be a stakeholder in these companies. Yeah. And that's super special if, uh, because in the past, until and crypto was a huge, massive change in sure. the investment landscape because in the past, like the rich were getting richer because they have access. So they have access to uh, angel investment opportunities. They have access to have a financial planner or like, you know, in some cases, like, you know, they have access to a family office when they were like a high net worth. But common people, middle class, they will only have access to Las Vegas and Perhaps like, you know, to one of these scratchy things that they can get uh, and, and, and win. But now we are bringing investment opportunities to the masses. And in particular, one thing that really inspires me and we are beta launching now, uh, Unicoin Women with a community that enables women to invest in unicorns with a special vehicle that is like a very low risk investment vehicle is an option to buy. So they can put their money for one year. If they are not happy, they can withdraw it, but they lock the price. So if for one year they give the money, they can lock the price of unicorns. And more especially in this very limited uh, approach that we took to, um, to community building for women and bringing them into investment, we do it at a 30% discount for women because this is the amount that we usually historically been underpaid. 30% oh. compared to men. So we are creating this a program in which through a membership that we are waiving for 2023, we'll give them access to experts from all over the world, to coaches, to master classes, to experiences, to go, for example, on a bootcamp to Tulum to learn about wealth creation, women power and money through yeah. Unicorn Women and the ability to invest in better terms mm -hmm. than the um, gentlemen that are not part of this community, just as, as a play also to, if you are part of our community, you can have the benefit that I think was taken from women historically of being paid less. So we are leveling the play field and doing it with a smaller ticket so women can, you know, learn yeah. and get more comfortable, define what is their risk profile. And in doing so, you know, start taking control of their financial future. We play with the idea of women, crypto, power, and money. Mm -hmm. and, and bringing designers, bringing wellness experts, bringing all the beautiful things that we women as, you know, very complex being love into the equation in, in a community. So that's something that I'm experimenting. Oh. I, I think it will work well. Uh, but the idea of changing the concept of money and power for purpose, which is something that we women love, power to be able to change positively things and, and money. Yeah, we need money. There's nothing wrong on that. Of course. No, I love it. Count me in as a woman. <laughs> Thank you. And woman, when I to tell you more about it because it's all about community and we go yes. to mm -hmm. community leaders like yourself. And it's interesting to note that um, for whatever reason, historically, women have not held the same um, position as inventors innovating. It, it varies by industry, but patent data shows 
women are less likely to be the sole inventor or to be the only one listed on a patent. It's a very small number, single digits. That's, that's a very interesting thing. Do you think that perhaps it's not that they are not the inventors, but that someone like, you know, Marie Curie story like, or the tales that they said, like, yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're smart, but calladita, calladita, like, yeah. And, and someone else took their patent because they were not companies like well, that. Or listed like as a co inventor. Or listed as a co inventor. Like, I, I know that happened to me actually in my career, but. The idea that like you aren't the sole inventors, other people, men have to be also on the list as co-inventing with you in order um, for it to be, you know, done. Yeah, it it's should be that we are team players <laughs> and that perhaps we are too shy to show that we are way too brilliant because that's not so popular. If like, you know, you can be brilliant, yeah. but not that brilliant because that made people uncomfortable. But it's I think, like, for example, I... Um, I always take the example of um, Charlie Lamar. Uh, uh, she was the brain behind the technology that made it possible, Bluetooth technology. And this is a massive discovery. And it's a game-changing discovery. But if you see her, she was a bombshell. She was as pretty and hot and yes. interesting uh, <laughs> as she could be. And you could not like put two things together. Like, you know, when you think of someone inventing something of this magnitude, you will not picture a Hedy Lamar. You will picture like uh, someone where you're looking like nerdy. Or <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> women in science, women in NASA, like a lot of times women just weren't given the lead roles, but yeah, we are changing credit. that now. Yeah, we are yeah, changing. Or the credit because yeah. it's a, uh, it's, it's a burden to, you know, embrace your power, intellectual, economical power. I remember many times when I was uh, lucky enough to start to, to, to do better that I was super uncomfortable because of talking about how well I was doing because I didn't want it to make someone in the room feeling that they were not uh, doing so, so well and I was just reflecting their own inability to do well. And then I said, I need to change that because why do I feel guilty for showing, showcasing something that I accomplished yeah. with mega tons of effort, nights up, no vacation, like determination, like a, a grit and patience and resilience against any logical um, reason and you know we're built differently and i was listening to an audiobook from a it was a recap from the world economic forum on women and and power called power moves and there is a whole episode that talks about precisely that right super powerful girls like women <laughs> from another planet that they say like chief of the states and they say like it's never, never easy. Like it's not. We feel yeah. guilty. Yeah. Like if we were stealing like the cat food. <laughs> like I heard Margaret Thatcher speak, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher speak around 2000. Um, she was an extraordinary leader in the world, and um, it was a privilege to hear her speak. She was powerful for sure. I loved your quote from Abraham Lincoln that the best way to predict the future is to create it. So I want to hear your prediction as we're wrapping up. Um, what, are you, what are you predicting and what are you creating? Where do you see the future? What's well, I think blockchain train has left the station. So the world will have new different type of a currency and investment means all, all in one. We believe that this is going to be mainstream very, very soon. And this will allow for a lot of opportunities for, for equality because many people, especially young people, because we over 40 are much more conservative than the new generations will, will embrace this technology and, and are we, you know, build completely different in a much more like a web three collaborative approach, yeah. you know, which we all get together and through the power of, of blockchain and, and transparency are building bigger things. So I, I think it's, the future is, is going to be 
great, much, much, much better than what we have seen. But it's part of the process as well. It is. I'm optimistic, as you are. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. It's just always a pleasure to see you. You have such a power and joy in what you're doing. It, it really um, comes through. Thank you for the light that you are in the world. Where can people find you online? They can find me in Silvina Moschini at Instagram, in Miss underscore internet in Twitter or in silvinamoschini.com. And let me say that I just reflect on people who have life like yourself. So thank you so much for the opportunity to, to join you. It's always a, a delight and I hope to see you soon very, very uh, much, much more often than and we'll have seen each other in the past. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Own Your Zone podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.